Right, what's up guys? This is Jack's Patch. I'm Jack, coming to you from the Plastic Bottle Greenhouse where we talk about permaculture, upcycling, zero waste, off-grid living and hacks on how to grow organic veggies. Right, so if you've been watching, welcome back. Um, just, we're hitting, it's the 8th of July and it is absolutely boiling. Probably the best and most consistent summer I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I've been speaking to a lot of older people as well and they're saying this is probably the best summer they've ever seen in the UK. Um, we're getting like late 20s, 30s every day and it's stifling, it's crazy hot. Great for growing. Um, minus it's been so dry so we need some rain at night would be perfect um, but yeah cannot complain we'll never complain about good weather in the UK um, but yeah so last year everything was at about this stage but maybe like mid mid August so if anything it's great like getting this kind of weather in July is spot on hopefully it will go through to August September extend my growing season maximize the food uh, production as well and we're getting like chilies in early July which is really really good um, considering last year I didn't have a great I think it was it was like a bit wet last year it didn't get really that hot too much yeah we had like a little stint of 30s in June and then it, it just kind of got a bit too wet and weren't that great so anyway I'm gonna stop blabbing blabbing blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so if you've been checking out my Instagram, uh, got a new logo for Jack's Patch, got some zero waste goodies coming as well. So um, that's what I'm all about. As I said about zero waste before, and as we're in the plastic bottle greenhouse, which is a great example of what I'm about and how we can reduce and recycle stuff that's around us. Um, I've got some um, reusable coffee cups, water bottles, um etc etc other stuff i need to look into getting as well for zero waste but gonna whack a logo on it um put them up for sale do a website put them on there uh put them on instagram for sale and all the profits from that will go be pumped into my dream of getting a local uh farm um and maybe expand that zero waste side of things as well but it'd be great if you guys can purchase like anything zero waste if it's from me or anywhere else it's just reducing um, single use stuff that we like you drink a bottle of water and that bottle goes straight into uh, landfill or if it does get recycled it only gets recycled so many times until it, that sort of plastic gets recycled and it doesn't go turn into anything decent it doesn't decompose it is just still on this planet for years way past we're going to be living so yeah have a little be conscious when you buy stuff but if you've got reusable cough cups and water bowls then perfect you can reuse it um and yeah just be conscious about your actions guys because they it, i think in the western world we we just do things and think you were not harming anything else but you just got to think beyond that all right so enough about that more about the update on the growing we're having a blazing summer as i've said everything's doing really well so this is the chocolate pepper i'm going to get up it from this pot as you can see the roots at the bottom and like up to these pots and they're thriving so great example of that is my melons were kept in cells like this for months and months and didn't really grow it's my fault needed to put them in pots but these guys have wanted to thrive and now they've gone from something like this size uh, where they were like dying and weren't really getting any nutrients out of the soil anymore to these in about a week they've like tripled in size so really excited about what I can get from them uh, so we've got the chocolate peppers we've got planting more coriander more nasturtiums um, got some oregano they grow really tiny so yeah I've got another part of them wicked on pizza uh, can't wait for that so putting more mint in in the jars and as you can see oh can you see that there's some roots coming through there uh, never can have enough mint always good for cocktails good for drinks um, really nice in the tea as well and it, the color when you put it in a tea it just turns bright green um, and anything vibrant as well is really good for us so we've got more lettuce got some extra tomatoes in here another bit of lettuce in the cells um, with long red chili peppers and I've just seen this guy it's absolutely smashing it so we're gonna have a lot of them by the looks of it can't wait for them uh, we've got some uh, beetroot here when I thin them out 
so you only really want one per cell because when you plant it out you want it to swell um, to a beetroot size you don't want it long and thin um, but with the um, bits that you're going to thin out really great in salads as a micro green um, really like really decorative to um, a plate as well um, we've got more basil again can never have enough basil it's great uh, to deter pests so I've planted it in between my tomatoes um, and that deters black fly which has actually taken all my um, nasturtiums look completely just wiped them out so I'm gonna plant something else in then uh, shortly um, today uh, there's my guy and um, yeah so that's a bit of a shame but always learning so I've planted them by the tomatoes because aphids they t like a big pest for tomatoes so in a planting them with tomatoes um, so that what the basil does the smell of the basil actually deters the black fly away from your tomatoes and I find it quite funny that they work together the basil and the tomato and then in food you have basil and tomato quite a lot together in Italian food which I find quite funny so they actually like seems that plants that companions with each other in the soil actually are companions with each other on a plate which is really interesting as well geeked out about that um yeah lettuce is absolutely it's looking gorgeous i love the look of this uh we're doing really well it's doing well it's doing it's in the shade so it's gonna have a sweet flavor grown in the full sun it'll have a spicy flavor so that's another little nugget of information i love as well um this whole bed is gonna get I'm going to clear all this. It's had raspberries the last two years, done really well. But as you can see, there's a lot of non production in the middle areas. Um, so, going to replenish this today. And in what it is, is that I don't have much room, so I need to maximise my growth. And this, this is not doing it. So, I'm going to clear all this and just have loads of rows of like radish, carrot, you can't have enough. Um, and I really haven't planted any of my yellow carrots so really want to get them in and yeah harvested and I've got, got I've harvested some white carrots so I'm gonna yet to show you that in a minute so potatoes they're ready to come up um, and we'll do that in the next video I guess uh, we've got yellow monge too so these look awesome can't wait to have these probably another few more days before I have any of them yet um, we've got some gonna harvest some yellow courgettes today they've come through really nice um, you want to pick them while they're small uh, because you want to get the best flavor out of them when they get too big too much water retention a bit watery in the flavor as well um, anything picked like young tends to have the best flavor best texture um, so yeah uh, here's loads of cucumbers cucumbers again and check this out right so purple sweet corn and i've planted loads it's like from like an american movie where you just tuck in like a big cot like little mini cornfield i want to can't wait to harvest all this it looks and tastes delicious um so these are the seeds so in the wind this shakes and the seeds go into into these bits where the cobs are going to grow and that will pollinate the cob and then they'll come through um, so you plant them together so this could shake and this could like drop over into the next plant just maximizes pollination but man look at the size of this one uh, pretty much as tall as me so yeah well happy with this it's been massive success this year right so uh, we have what do we have in here yellow monster peppers they are absolutely booming in this little mini greenhouse here um, yeah really really happy with with all the peppers and chilies this year just down to the weather I mean like next year bring on the mangoes bring on the pineapples be like palm trees got little palm tree seeds um, yeah just kind of whack it all in no, I'd be sick though if we had mangoes and and whatnot that would just be another level be tropical England I mean probably could have got away with it this year just down to the heat it's been unreal but yeah so we've got grapes here guys they're coming through bunch of grapes but really like those grapes have got seeds in so probably best to make like a like wine or a jam out of them uh, so yeah excited to do that so we've got the tomatoes now guys they're coming through 
um, as I showed, said, got the basil in between, got more nasturtium, so the edible flowers, they work really well in between tomatoes. Uh, they attract the bees over as well, which you need to pollinate these guys to turn into the tomatoes. But yeah, look, loads of bunches. Um, make sure you always pick these little guys out. These suckers take too, all the energy, so the ones in between the leaf and the stem. Make sure you always pick them out, and I always cut the lower, lower foliage off as well. Um, that just prevents disease. So all the uh, spores is called blight. Once that hits your tomatoes, your tomatoes get rotten. So what you want to do is is prevent humidity. So all the leaves, if they're like a bit like this, a bit if there's too much foliage, um, I think it's going to create a lot of humidity, in it, especially in this heat. So you've got to trim it all back. Um, trim it up to probably up to the first trellis of tomatoes so I need to get rid of these two and then it just um, it just gives it a chance half a chance all right look at that one lovely right now we're gonna go to my second bit of the plot so we've got okra I mean these guys are doing well these look like they have a bit of a potassium deficiency so I've got to, got to figure out how to fix that organically uh, I need to get like uh, probably need some more nettle tea some more of the worm juice as well um, get whack a load of that on it should sort itself out so I need to clear these two beds today um, harvest the beetroot we're harvesting beetroot now I mean look got loads of it which is wicked, I love a bit of beetroot. And it, it, the more raw it is, the better as well. So anything like that is just littered with antioxidants. And they're really good for your blood, oxygenates your blood. So it's really, really healthy for you. Um, and as I said in my last video, guys, about um, cucumbers growing up the trellis, um, uh, cucumbers growing up the sunflowers, um, so far a success. Um, they're both growing well. And as you can see, look, be really, really easy to harvest. So there's a little cucumber there. Once that gets to full size, it'll just be a matter of twisting it off, twisting it off. But you just got to keep it growing up, up the sunflower. Keep going straight, and then it'll be just super, super easy to harvest. So I've been really happy with the success of that. Um, it's a bit more here. These lower leaves are dying off now, but look, as you can see need to get this guy to go further up the plant yeah so buzzing how that's worked out as well um, we got carrots and radish in between this is an older bed actually I need to get like de weed and stuff but I pulled my first carrot out yesterday um, definitely gonna add this to my dinner plate later but that's um, a white carrot there so white and purple carrots are like the original uh, white yellow and purple I'm pretty sure this is a white carrot yeah white or yellow um, so that's the original carrots before uh, the I think the farmer for a Dutch king back in the old days cultivated uh, carrots orange to please the king um, so obviously in Holland like everything's orange all the, the football jerseys like um, when they celebrate their national days etc to please King he cultivated it orange and then that's stuck and then that's all you see in the supermarket now so probably because they're an original carrot they're not a hybrid carrot you're gonna get probably more nutrition out of it and you don't want anything that's genetically modified um, I guess orange carrots are probably natural to a degree, but some of the stuff that you can buy from like garden centers and that is have like a F1 hybrid type and that is been cultivated in a way that is not natural. So watch out for that. And it's probably best to grow white carrots. It also looks better on a plate. You surprise people as well, a bit of biodiversity. Um, so yeah, definitely add it to um, your growing list for sure. It's been pretty easy as well, as long as you give it enough soil with no stones, bit of sand in the soil, it'll grow perfectly straight deep down and you only need to get them like so big, you don't need to get them massive. 
Um, yeah, last thing I wanted to show you is, oh, like one of the last things is my peas. So they, I mean, they've dying off now, but I've been harvesting loads and loads of pea pods. And trust me, once you eat peas that you're homegrown, you will never want to eat peas from the supermarket again because the flavor is so different to what you expect, but it's actually like so flavorsome, so unreal. I've just been eating them raw. Uh, there's no need to cook them. They just taste so amazing. Um, so yeah, definitely, if you've never had a homegrown pea, you're missing out. So last thing, look at the kale. The kale forest. It has just smashed it this year. Um, coriander's gone to flower, like I explained in my last video. So that's why I'm planting more to get plant them underneath um, the kale forest. So where have I got it? Have I got some some coriander under there? But it's creating like a, a little microclimate under under here and even my hands cooler and it's a lot shadier under here as well so they'll probably um, probably thrive under there they like a temperature of 4 to 20 degrees like I've explained before so surprising but it's another way it's probably the best way of doing it or one of the better ways of doing it or you just wait till like uh, you're doing spring or probably like autumn time to grow coriander um, so herbs the lavender has done really well booming same as the rosemary uh, the tarragon's really taken as well I've only got little little bits of herb but really like enjoy using cut come again plants like rosemary um, and mint as well got more mint as I've said so I've got like pineapple mint here I've got spearmint chocolate mint that smells like after eight the chocolate mint it's really really good so yeah I'm probably gonna I've make more cuttings of this clear it out then I'll put my melons that will grow up up a bit of string and then we'll see how that goes as well so that's the final little tour just wanted to show you um, today I'll sort this bed out and probably do a little recap at the end of the video but just wanted to show you a few more things um, summer update it's exciting time of the year if you've been watching it from the start these videos it's it's like you've seen it from winter and it's come round like, like a whole season you've seen of like it being completely dead the stuff you do in the winter to to get ready right, for so the cleared my bed and nasturtiums new bed to plant in and also cleared this bed didn't get too much done it's a bit boiling today 30 degrees um but up to all the chocolate peppers up into bigger pots so they're happier and then just absolutely harvesting an absolute bumper batch of like mainly root veg. So we've got dinner tonight consists of we've got the yellow courgettes, we've got loads of beetroot, there's beetroot all the way under there. Uh, I've harvested a few of these white carrots, just wanted to see what they taste like really, even though they're like too thin to eat, like just wanted to try one or two of them. Uh, I've got loads of really good healthy lettuce at the minute as well. And then I've got a couple of bat batches of the watermelon reddish, which I'm gonna do a uh, Instagram post on because I've cut it in half just now and the colors are so vibrant all the way in. Um, and it has quite a little bit of a spicy taste to it. So really nice to add to a salad. But yeah, really happy with that. Oh, I've got a purple kale there as well. I'm really happy with this uh, first like big kind of harvest for the for the summer. Um, loads more to come when we've got the chilies, got the tomatoes, peppers come in, uh, more courgettes, cucumbers, uh, sweet corn. We've got grapes, nasturtiums, basil, uh, loads more herbs as well. Um, yeah, and peas and okra. Okra is probably going to be the number one thing I want to try this year. It's never had. I've only had it once before in like. Um, in an African restaurant, absolutely loved it though, but really healthy for you. So, as I said, try and grow foods, keeps you healthy. Um, all about the vibrant, the taste, the flavors. All right, so yeah, that's that's it for this episode, guys. So, if you like it, like and subscribe. And there's a lot more coming. I just wanted to do a quick update on uh, this summer so far. So, ew. see you soon.